If you've been on social media of any kind in the last seven years, chances are you've seen someone telling you to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, or maybe you've recommended it to someone else. It's a wholesome, funny show that focuses on a police precinct in Brooklyn, New York, and features an interesting and diverse cast of characters. I know the show has its problems, but I'm not here to talk about those today. Today, I'm here to talk about one of the show's central characters and his undeniably ADHD traits, Jake Peralta, played by Andy Samberg. Brooklyn Nine-Nine's Jake Peralta has ADHD, and today, I'm going to talk about it. I was diagnosed with ADHPI, or primarily inattentive presentation, in October of 2018 at the age of 25. Around this time is when I finally decided to start watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I had seen scenes from the show all over Tumblr, and I couldn't deny my curiosity was piqued. From the very first episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I found myself relating heavily to Jake Peralta, who was initially introduced as the show's protagonist. I related to many ADHD-coded characters over the years without realizing it, but this was the first time I could actively connect traits of his behavior with my diagnosis. It was comforting also to see someone as a successful police detective albeit a fictional one, with such obvious ADHD coding. Now, it's not canon, but it's one of those non-canon things that so many people agree on that it might as well be. So, let's get started with some textbook ADHD traits. Jake is easily distracted or unable to regulate attention. From the first moment that we're introduced to Jake Peralta, we find him playing with the technology in a store that's been burgled. He does a monologue into a camera, plays with a piano that has a techno beat, and just doesn't appear to be paying any attention. The truth is, he's actually already solved the case. One of the main traits for ADHD is an inability to properly regulate attention. And the opening scene of Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a great example of this, because Jake is paying attention just to several things at once. This is something that can and often does cause problems for Jake, leading to impulsiveness, another classic ADHD trait. He jumps around the store and is constantly looking to solve puzzles and get away from his desk, making him appear externally hyperactive. Unfortunately, this can make him appear childish as well. As Terry puts it to Captain Holt, Jacob Peralta is my best detective. He likes putting away bad guys and solving puzzles. The only puzzle he hasn't solved is how to grow up. This is a consistent issue Jake struggles with throughout the series, and a large part of ADHD in general. He doesn't have a lack of attention, but rather cannot regulate what he pays attention to, even when asked. I actually made a tally of the times in the first three episodes someone directly or indirectly tells Jake to focus. The final number was eight, so let me know if I missed any. Jake can be very impulsive. Some of the ways that Jake is impulsive are fairly obvious. For example, he goes with Charles in the first episode to interrogate a suspect on a whim without notifying Captain Holt and even gets into a fight with him. Some are less obvious, however. For example, he constantly includes personal details that he simply thought of while speaking to others whether or not they're related to the conversation. He is often witty and thinks very quickly, but this can result in him making inappropriate remarks or oversharing. He can also be disobedient at times with Captain Holt because he runs off to do something that he just has to do right now. Another common trait for ADHD folks. It's really hard to suppress that impulsive thought, okay? A good example of this is in the first episode when, while erasing the perpetrator that they've been chasing, Jake interrupts everything to point out that he's figured out why Captain Holt wants them to wear ties. Captain Holt tries to get him back on track a few times, but he just has to finish the sentence. This is something I often do personally. I make a connection and I have to share it before I forget about it. I took a tally of impulsive or reactive things Jake does in the first three episodes. The final tally was 16. Jake is disorganized or messy, to the point where it causes regular problems with his professional and personal life. Jake seems to hate organized tasks, something Captain Holt points out more than once. He makes mistakes in his paperwork often. His desk is incredibly messy, to the point where mice are actively living in it. Captain Holt also shows him two photographs of his locker and asks him which is a dumpster, and Jake doesn't know the answer. They're both photos of his locker. This is more obvious in later episodes, particularly in the episode where Gina helps Jake find a new place to live. He has an entire bathtub of unread mail, where he left it and intended to read it later. He also has several interests that are completely unrelated to each other. A combination of seeking stimulation, impulsivity, and disorganization. This is later in the series, but still relevant. Jake does have an organization system, but it's not one that appears organized to anyone else. His things are often in piles on his desk everywhere. Unfortunately, he has to work at finding a middle ground over the series and how to work with what Captain Holt expects of him as a professional. My tally of Jake being disorganized or messy over the first three episodes was 11. Now let's talk about some lesser-known ADHD traits. 
You may not know, for example, that ADHD can cause a person to become overfocused or be unable to switch their attention when needed. At several points, Jake becomes overly focused on something or another. A hyperfixation is a special interest that an ADHD or may have for a period of time. For me, that might be horror movies or horror media. A hyperfocus is a period of complete and utter focus that lasts for a few hours to a few days. One example that appears in the first episode several times is that Captain Holt asks Jake to wear a tie. He responds by, in this order. One, giving ties to Amy and Charles to make a point. Two, ties his tie around his stomach and shows Captain Holt. Three, finally wears a tie, but stands up only to show that he is wearing a Speedo. And four, as stated before, makes the connection that Captain Holt wanted them to wear ties when they're arresting a murderer. And it interrupts the arrest to the point that he's figured out why Captain Holt wants them to wear a tie in the first place. At several points throughout the series, Jake becomes overly focused on something or another when most of the people around him have moved on. This is just one example and it isn't isolated. It would take a long time to go into every example over the course of the series. One prime example of Jake having a hyperfixation, the term ADHDers use for something they fixate on over a long period of time, is the movie Die Hard. Throughout the series, Jake brings up this movie over and over because he finds it exciting and loves it just so much. People with ADHD ADHD can find themselves returning to prior sources of stimulation over and over because it's a source of dopamine that promises to deliver. This kind of inability to switch between focus points is common in ADHDers, although it's a lesser known trait of the disorder. ADHD can cause problems with emotional regulation, and this can cause Jake to appear socially unaware or even display contrasting emotions to a situation or even his own tone of speech. This one is something people don't generally associate with ADHD, and to be honest, it could fit into a few different categories. People with ADHD don't just have trouble regulating our focus, we have trouble regulating our emotions. This is something Jake regularly displays. For example, he repeatedly grins while saying something is terrible, or smiles during an interaction because he doesn't want to face emotion. He also openly displays emotion in some form or another, but his face often contrasts the words he uses, or more often, his tone doesn't match the conversation. I wasn't sure at first I'm not making a category for this, because it's not necessarily associated with ADHD. It's more just a way that we come across as a combination of several ADHD traits tied together. I noticed it so often, though, that I decided it should add it to the tallies. The tally for appearing socially unaware or displaying emotions in contrast to a situation in the first three episodes was 21. Now let's talk about another piece of emotional dysregulation, rejection-sensitive dysphoria. Rejection-sensitive dysphoria, or RSD, is a result of the prefrontal cortex and ADHD brain having difficulty switching between and regulating emotions. In the face of real or imagined rejection, a person with ADHD may become extremely anxious and even feel severely depressed. ABCs of ADHD actually has a really good video about tips on dealing with this. I'll link it below. Jake is told off by Captain Holt, or in particular in the third episode when he is having trouble solving cases, becomes easily agitated, moody, depressed even and will do anything he can to try to get back on the horse, so to speak. This is a recurrent theme with this character, which makes sense. It's something those of us with ADHD deal with regularly. In the first three episodes, I tallied 10 instances of Jake dealing with RSD. There's a much later episode in the series that's a better example of this, but as we're only focusing on the first three, and I didn't want to dive into a different, entirely different episode just for this point. If you guys want me to go into detail about ADHD traits shown in this episode, it's the one that focuses on an interrogation with just Captain Holt and Jake, let me know. So why does any of this matter? It might seem silly to someone who doesn't have ADHD, but although Jake is not canonically, yet, here's hoping, confirmed to have the disorder, his character is one of the more down-to-earth and accurate fictional depictions of it. We don't see him being unable to socialize or sit still, but we do see him and his traits calm down with adulthood, as often appears with age, for fear of social rejection. We see him as being confident, cocky, even arrogant, as well as intelligent. His overly confident nature can get him into trouble, and often does, but it also allows allows him to be more sure of the conclusions he makes when he connects his several pieces of a case together at once. He is a good detective, and though his arrogance could be seen as a mask for insecurity, his superior officers do often confirm that he's good to work with. He's kind, he's funny, he's emotionally a roller coaster, and honestly, I really, really appreciate that he's there. That brings me to my next point. Everyone that works with him embraces 
that he's different. They don't love every single thing he does, unless you're talking about Charles, but they do love him as he is. Captain Holt does take time to adjust to the fact that Jake does things a little differently, and as a result, Jake actively grows and try to follow orders as commanded. Later in the series, when Jake is engaged to Amy, he openly worries that he isn't smart enough for her. She reassures him that she loves the way he thinks. He does grow as, as a character with time, but what hits me more is that he works in an environment that works with him, instead of trying to force him into a neurotypical box. It may be fictional, but to me, that's very encouraging. And if you haven't seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I really do recommend it. It's wholesome, funny, and yeah, I know it has issues, but I really like it. And, you know, it can help you get your mind off all the never-ending worries that constantly plague us. And until next time, thanks for watching. Hey world and all who inhabit it, thank you so much for watching. I know this is a very different style video than what you're used to on this channel, but I think my creativity needed a change, especially if I want to make it a sustainable thing, and I really do, especially with all the uncertainty going on in the world right now. If you want to help me stabilize and you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, hit that like button, share it, all the YouTube stuff, comments are great too and consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to help keep the lights on. I will see you um, likely next week. Bye. That song's copyrighted. Let's start the video. That was awkward. <laughs>